Hi, hello, welcome back everybody, Sam here to another little, I guess, tip video. I think that's what it would be, tip video. So today I want to talk about everything pathway related. Now if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, and if you're not new, don't forget to like if you want to see these types of videos in the future, and also my Instagram that is there in case you want to get in contact with me. And this video was actually suggested by someone who messaged me on Instagram. Um, yesterday or this morning so you know who you are so thanks to him you guys get this video so today i'm going to talk about the importance of bike paths and really how to use them and maximize the use of them throughout your whole city now when you do this this can really significantly reduce the amount of cars so that's going to be good for congestion reduction uh it's also in real life um so some of these things that i'm mentioning are things that are thought about in real life so as I am a town planner walkability is something that is really really important to me and to the town planning community in Australia and hopefully throughout the rest of the world eventually so it's good for your health as well and it really just encourages walkability it encourages cycling it encourages transport public transport use um, and it really just gets people out and about instead of just driving so it puts less emphasis on your car uh, and things like that so I'm sure you guys get what is so, so I'm sure you guys get the benefits of it in general but here are some things that can make it work a lot more better so just before I start showing examples and other things like that just think to yourself why do we need an easy highway to drive along right or why do we need straight roads that are just very easy to drive on with that aren't confusing and it's because we want that we want it to be accessible we need it so we can get to places from a to b quite quickly and easy so why not implement those same rules of road layout into pedestrian pathways so one of the most beneficial things that you can do for a pathway is to make a pathway highway now it sounds really stupid to say a pedestrian pathway highway but if you have an actual highway network throughout your whole city it's going to really benefit them because first of all it's going to make it a lot more easier for you to design it you could have one main pathway route that goes throughout your whole city and then you can branch off to other little areas so it's basically like a highway going through your city so for example if i just show you guys right now i've implemented a pathway that kind of goes halfway through the city now i haven't done all of it because it's quite it takes a lot right so if I go up to here so this is an industrial area and it goes all the way along down here along the river past it passed by a residential area it passes by a school and it continues on continues on goes past this mini downtown area goes past more public transport continues on continues on continues on continues on continues on so having one single pathway makes it a lot more easier and then you can easily branch off to different areas that you want to go for ex so for example i have this one that branches off over the top of the main road and branches off right up into this public transport hub now it's very very beneficial to connect your pathways to different specific areas so for this example you can see a lot of people are coming straight off of the what is this the monorail or the trams or even the buses here and they're going straight onto the pathway and then they can get onto their bike which will spawn or they can walk and it's making it extremely extremely accessible and easy for them to get around now other places that you can branch off to are into shopping districts so for example in there or into residential areas so you want to make sure that you have point a to be connected very easily and well um, so for example you want to make sure that you have like i have done down here you want to make sure that you have your industrial area easily connected up to your residential area because obviously these people are going to want to work in the industrial area or into the commercial area um, and then just doing a pathway like that i can already notice that it significantly reduced the amount of traffic going from here just to here because they're all preferring to just walk or cycle because it's not that far um, and it's just easier now i have enabled the policy that allows for more encouragement of the bike use so i've put on this one here encouraging biking now i can 100 percent say that just having no pathways like these guys here it doesn't encourage encourage walkability at all 
at at all even if you enable the um the encourage biking policy it doesn't do anything so once you put in pathways like this that are elevated that go to specific places that make it a lot more accessible people will use it they will come in big amounts big groups of people so you can see there's already a lot of people using it and if you have really long distance pathways so if you go back to my Inselstadt video that city is very very I guess walkability is that a word because there's pathways literally everywhere and people were cycling from one point on the map at all the way to the other end going through several several tiles when I say a tile I mean these guys here so people will cycle for, for example from here all the way down to here if you have an easy enough network something that you want to avoid is pedestrian crossings on the road so any type of crossing is going to slow it down and make it make it less attractive so that's why I have this going straight over the top and then you'll also notice a lot of the time I will put pedestrian crossing bridges over the top especially in areas of public transport and although these people are still using it you can actually very easily stop them from using it by just going like this and going like that so that I will actually use this instead now obviously this isn't going to be good for people who want to cycle so you would just continue on with elevated ones like this because it's a lot more smooth the transition is a lot more easier and if you have it like this they don't have to stop at all they can just continuously go and go and go and they don't have any issues to worry about and just to go back on what I said a few minutes ago about how people will cycle all the way you can see that there's a lot of people already using it and they're probably if I go up into here I'm assuming a lot of them will probably go all the way down so you can see it's being used all the way up until here um, now, for someone who isn't a cycling enthusiast, that's a pretty long way, but I mean, for some people that's not long at all, but in terms of the game, I think this is pretty great, and if I had continued on the pathway, I can 100% say that the people would go straight down into the city, um, you can already see that there's, they're kind of finding their way down, um, so there's definitely a need for a pathway to go down through this way to make it a lot more easier and accessible. So in the future, when you're thinking about designing your pathway layout, you want to keep it very, very simple. You want to make sure that it's very obvious where to go. Um, you don't want it to be extremely zigzaggy going through. So, and you don't, and like I said, you don't want them to be interrupted by uh, like pedestrian crossings, for example, for example, like here or anything like that. So you want to make it extremely, extremely easy. Um, there's a whole lot of great pedestrian bridges that you can use that go over the top of roads and like um, the water here which I love this one by the way this is a pretty pretty cool one and if you decide that you want to do something more in the inner areas of a suburb where there isn't really any space to do specific elevated pathways so for example this area here I wouldn't do an elevated pathway because it's it is quite low density so over to here I'll just show you I added in just a very very simple pathway going directly from the main pathway highway going straight up on this very quiet quiet road you can see there's only like six cars parked on there seven cars it's a very very quiet road and it goes basically straight up to this train station you could even go a step further and put down just pedestrian friendly ones like this which will really already encourage a lot of people just to use them even if it's not actually 100% designated as a pedestrian or cycling pathway now just one more thing before I wrap up the whole video putting in pedestrian bridges and cycling highways and things like that it can really speed up traffic in general and not due to the the lack of congestion well yes it does help with lack of people driving but for example if you have these bridges like this it basically removes the waiting time for people who cross in front of your car so people are automatically going up here not in this case exactly you can still see people going across there but it removes people going across here and it removes the waiting time for cars and if that that might be something that's very beneficial for a very busy road congested area just removing the traffic lights and the pedestrian crossing can really speed up a difference now my reasoning for not using tunnels is based from real life reasons so it's been proven so many times by so many different studies around the world that 
tunnels do encourage a lot more crime. Reason being is because tunnels, they are more private. People can't see what's going on in there. So even though some tunnels are very well lit up uh, and there's a lot of people around, sometimes there's tunnels that don't have a lot of people and crime can easily happen in those and people can get away with it. It's very, very common. So based from those real life reasons, I never do them in the game because I just don't like the concept of potential crime and I know it doesn't matter in the game. So I'll always do bridges instead because a bridge, if there's crime happening here, all of these people who live in this building, they can look down and see. All of the people driving past, they can see. Um, all of these people over here, they could maybe see if they're walking past. But if this was a tunnel, the people driving, they can't see what's happening in there. The people waiting for the bus, they don't see what's happening in there. And these guys in this building here, they can't see down into the tunnel what's going on. So I hope that makes sense because that is the reason why I don't ever use pedestrian tunnels. So guys, thank you all for watching. And just to wrap up quickly, pedestrian highways are really, really great for encouraging walkability, encouraging cycling, encouraging more public transport use and less traffic congestion and less car use. Um, they're also good for your health and they also encourage more economic growth, which has actually been proven because the people who are walking along or cycling along, they're going to see more things. So they're more likely to buy things and it really just livens up a whole area as well. Hopefully I encourage you to use long distance cycling highways. So you can do a cycling highway that goes all the way from one end from the north part of your city all the way down to the south, but make sure that you have them going over elevated busy parts of the roads. So you don't want to make the pedestrian highway connect to really busy intersections um, and like I said if you remove the pedestrian crossing at intersections that that can really speed up the traffic in that whole area because they don't have to wait for people to cross so keep those things in mind now this doesn't apply to every every single city but definitely does in larger more busy areas and I know, I know you guys probably know a lot of this stuff, but I think it's good to bring it up again, just to go through it, maybe have a little bit of a refresher. It's good for me to have a refresher as well, um, get myself thinking back about pathways. So thank you guys for watching and let me know, what do you think about all of these things that I mentioned? Now, keeping in mind that a lot of these things that I mentioned are real life. They're real life techniques, they're real life concerns. They're just, it's all real life put into the game as well. So what do you think about all of this? Do you use long distance cycling networks okay i'm blabbering on i'm kind of ranting but anyway thank you guys for watching and as always i'll see you guys very soon with another episode bye for now guys